My name is Heather Beverless, and I'm with Jefferson County Planning and Zoning. Thank you, everyone, for coming to the Conifer Draft Plan presentation. This is the biggest turnout we've had so far, so this is wonderful to see. Before we start, I want to let everyone know where the restrooms are. They are down the stairs. Take a left, take another left, and they're on your right. Feel free at any time to get up if you need to get snacks or use the restroom or stretch your legs. I also wanted to note there's a handout that wasn't out there initially. I almost forgot about it. That is this. There is another plan that is starting in Jefferson County, not by planning and zoning but by emergency management. And it is the Jefferson County Multi-Jurisdictional Multi-Hazard Mitigation Plan. That is quite the hint of the mouth. That is, it's an update. So Jefferson County already had this plan in place before. And like I said, it's actually not a plan going through planning and zoning. There are a lot of hazards in Jefferson County including flash flooding, wildfires, severe weather, such as winter storms, landslides, and rockfall. This plan is a plan that is recommended by FEMA because in the long run, it's better for citizens and it costs a lot less to react to a disaster that's kind of been planned for, rather than for the jurisdiction to kind of figure out what to do after a disaster has occurred. Also, FEMA offers a lot of incentives to the community for doing these things, including grant funding for mitigation projects and points towards lower floodplain insurance rates for everyone in the county. There, like I said, there's a flyer on the back for more information if you are interested in participating in that plan. But tonight, we're going to talk about the Conifer Plan. We've been going through the process, and tonight we have a draft to present to everyone. There are copies in the back. I separated out the text from the land use maps, and then there are also what I call supplemental maps, and those have things like historic resources, open space, visual corridors, other things that apply to the entire area that were easy to show on one map. Tonight, I'm going to go through an overview of the plan. I see a few new faces. It's also important for people that have been to these meetings before just to reiterate what the plan is all about, how planning and zoning uses it. Then I'll go into some of the key changes from our last couple of meetings. So we had some activity center meetings and a land use meetings recently. I'll go through some changes that I want people to comment on that are hung up throughout the room. And lastly, we'll go around the room and I'll tell you about the little exercise that I'm hoping everyone will participate in so that, can, so that staff can get larger feedback than what we've been getting. We haven't been getting a whole lot of responses. We want people to, maybe if we ask very pointed questions and have you respond in a different way, we'll get additional comments. The Conifer Plan is a very large area. It's one of our largest plan areas. It, here's 285 on the map, and it extends all the way from Turkey Creek, North Turkey Creek, through Aspen Park, Conifer, down to Pine Junction and the county line, then further south, down to Pine Grove and Buffalo Creek, and then it extends east all the way to the foothills. A community plan is a guide for future growth. This is what staff, planning commission, and the Board of County Commissioners uses when we look at proposals to rezone property. What is a rezoning? Everybody has zoning already existing on their property. In 1941, Jefferson County developed their zoning resolution and properties are zoned throughout the county. This plan does not change any of the existing zoning that is currently in place. If you're, a lot of properties up in Conifer are zoned Agricultural 2. 
Agricultural 2 allows for one home per 10 acres with a lot of other agricultural uses. Barns, grazing of livestock such as cows, horses, llamas, alpacas. My favorite is beefalo. Then you can do crops, you can raise crops, you can even do some small commercial uses that are complementary to an, ex an agricultural use, such as a vet clinic or a cemetery. If your property is already zoned Agricultural 2, any recommendations of this plan will not change what you're allowed to do on your property. However, if you did want to come in and do something different, let's say you wanted to do one acre lots, that's when you would come into the county and you would need to apply for a rezoning process. That's when this plan would come into play. This is what staff looks at along with compatibility and compliance with our zoning resolution when somebody wants to change the use on their property. There are always a couple of questions that I always seem to get at these meetings. I thought I would just bring them up and answer them right away in case people had these questions. Why is the plan not always followed? There are some situations where, where the Board of County Commissioners might end up ultimately making a decision that is different from what the plan recommends. The community plans are advisory. They're not a regulation and therefore they're a guiding document, not something that must be adhered to. Now, we do typically have a fairly high rate of compliance. We did a study a few years back and about 80% of cases that go forward do comply with the plan recommendations. Another thing to consider is that we also do something at Jefferson County called a pre-application. Those are applications that don't necessarily move forward to the rezoning process. Somebody might come into the county and say, I'm thinking about this idea. I'm thinking about rezoning my agricultural two property to one acre lots. They would come in, they could come into the county and get a general read from the county about whether or not we might support that and what some of the other issues would be that might come up in a process like that. After receiving comments back from staff, they may find out that it doesn't comply with the plan recommendation. They may find out that there's a lot of infrastructure costs like in road improvements or water and sanitation that they have to do. And they may find out that there's not a lot of community support for it. So they may go away. Those are cases that a lot of times are not sent out to homeowners associations, the general public, because it's just an initial kind of information gathering phase. Another question that I've gotten before is why have the plan? Why not just follow the existing zoning? It's very predictable, it's in place, everybody knows what the zoning is, they can easily access it from Jefferson County Planning and Zoning. And there are a couple reasons for not just following the existing zoning. One is that, like I said, Jefferson County initially created our zoning resolution in 1941. A lot of things have changed since then. Situations have changed. 285 went from a two-lane road. Who knows if it was what it was in 1941. I'm not sure. Maybe I don't know if anybody else here knows. Went to a four-lane highway. That changes the character of the area a lot. Also, we know from looking at demographic predictions there are a lot of people that want or are moving to Colorado. We know that Jefferson County is a very desirable place for people to move to because we have wonderful <coughs> mountains, we have plains that are very accessible to the mountains, people can live in the mountains and be a short commute to the city. So we know that there is going to be development pressure in the conifer area in the future. With the plan, what we're trying to do is guide, are there places that might be appropriate for growth? Are there areas that are not appropriate for growth? What are the things that we need to look at so we can look at it before we start getting those applications for specific projects? 
look at it more objectively and see, okay, what are the areas that have slope issues that we should stay away from? What are some of the areas that have wildfire hazards, severe wildfire hazards that we need to stay away from? And plan for those up front and see, are there areas that may allow for some additional uses or density? <coughs> That's my brief overview of the plan. Does anybody have any questions before about the plan in general before I get into some of the key changes that I wanted to talk about? Yeah. I guess uh, my name is Bennett Auslander. And I guess my question is the original plan is 1986. It took approximately three years for that plan to actually come into existence. And there were probably, in the three years, 100 meetings. Uh, the community today is over 15,000 people. I guess my concern, or what I'm asking is, I don't have any problems with the people here, but this is a small percentage of 15,000 people. And how representative is it of that 15,000 people? And what happens with the vast majority of the people that aren't here? How do their voice get recorded either for or not necessarily against, but they may have suggestions that we've not thought of? So that is a very good question. The question was what basically, if I can summarize, how are we getting out to the people that aren't here at the meeting tonight? How do people find out about this? How can they comment? And is, is it representative of the entire population as a whole? These plans are always difficult to make sure that we get representation from all different people that live and work and own property in the Conifer area. We have been doing outreach as far as sending emails to all homeowners associations that are registered with the county. We hope that those homeowners associations spread the word amongst the people in their homeowners association. For some of the special meetings about village centers and for tonight, there were postcards sent to every property owner within the Aspen Park and Pine Junction village centers or activity centers and keep everybody within 500 feet of those activity centers. We also did notification to larger property owners, 100 acres or more. We have been in contact with the local paper, the High Timber Times, and I know that they have been attending meetings and covering it at key points in the newspaper to try to get the word out about this. I'm trying to think, what else have we done? We have partnered with the Conifer Area Council, who has a really extensive email list. Uh -huh. They offered to us to be able to put some questions on a survey that they did last year. We took up that opportunity. We, they got, I want to say, 1,100 responses back on that survey, so we do have some answers to some questions from additional people, and they have been keeping people up to date on this process. I would encourage everybody here to talk to friends and neighbors and any other people that you know that might be interested about this plan because it is sometimes difficult for people to hear about it and to get people to the meetings. If people can't make it to the meetings, we do have all of this information online. And the key questions tonight, I'm going to create an internet survey that I'll send out to everyone on our email distribution list so that people can answer these specific questions. But also, anybody who is not here tonight can review the plan online. They can give me a call and I'll send them a hard copy if they like. And that way they can send comments to me without having to be present at this meeting. Okay, I see your hand and then we'll go to you. My name is Robert Fredrickson and uh, I know that 285 eventually is going to be widened you know, on past Pine Junction. And that is also going to have an impact on um, how we enter and exit the highway, particularly at Kings Valley. 
Um, I know at one point in time, the idea was to take out the Long Brothers Garage and move all the traffic from Kings Valley and the whole new shopping center that's going in there and move it down the frontage road um, and then build an overpass right there. I don't know if that's still the plan or not, but if it does happen that way, um, then there'll be some loss of commercial. And at one point in time, the county said that if there was commercial loss, that they would allow commercial gain in that same area. Is that still the policy? I was not aware of that policy. That is definitely something we can discuss. One of the things that I wanted to bring up tonight was there was a proposal to perhaps make the Kings Valley area a, another activity center. That is something that was asked on the Conroe <coughs> Area Council survey and did not receive a lot of support for. But there are also policies in this plan now that at least acknowledge the existing commercial uses. I don't, I'm trying to remember if there's an overpass in the plans, but I have them here if you wanted to look at them to see what the most current design plans are. And that way you can see whether or not there would be any commercial that might be taken away by that. One thing that is an option is perhaps instead of additional land in the area for commercial is maybe intensifying what's there. That, so that could be another option for that. Neil, you had a question? I have a question about the uh, conifer area plan boundary. When you compare the uh, stable front sheet with the map on the right and the area from Aspen Park West, they're not the same. And on the Aspen Park map it says Conifer land use area, and this one it says Conifer area plan boundary, so what's the real boundary? The real boundary is what, what is on the land use map, so thank you for bringing that up. So the question was, there are two different boundary lines on the northern part of the Conifer plan. And I'm glad you brought that up because we actually changed it partway through the process because we, we are updating the Evergreen plan right now as well. And we found that this was the time, if we wanted to make any adjustments between the two plans, this was the time to do it. We have made some modifications, mostly on the northwestern part of the plan boundary, and I forgot to update it on some of our general maps that we have. So that is a very good point that we need to update those. So that's basically uh, the Shadow Mountain uh, uh, Warhawk. Black Forest neighborhoods are in the Conifer plan and not in the Evergreen plan, which is kind of important to you have to live up there. We are coordinating very, so the, the comment was that it's, it's the Shadow Mountain Brook and Brook Forest area are now in the Conifer plan rather than the Evergreen plan. And because we are coordinating so heavily on the Evergreen Plan and the Conifer Plan and land uses in those areas. I hate to say, but it almost doesn't matter which plan you're in, you'll be covered one way or another, and we're trying to make those recommendations very consistent across both plan areas, so that whether you're in the Evergreen Plan or the Conifer Plan, the name doesn't matter, your recommendation would have been the same either plan you're in. Okay, I'm going to start going into some of the key changes that we want to have you comment specifically on tonight. If there, there, there's a lot of information in the draft plan, so if there are other comments, please feel free to comment on other things. But these are some areas where we've kind of heard maybe a couple of different viewpoints or maybe we've heard some recent comments that we wanted to bring back to the group. So I do want to hear about everything, but we have certain areas that we want to specifically highlight. Those areas have to do with activity centers, primarily the Aspen Park activity centers, the specific land use maps, which cover the entire area, and then also meadow policies. Meadows has been a pretty big issue that has come up with this plan update, and we've created some policies specifically to address those, and we want to get feedback on those. First, 
There are maps around the room, and this is the first one. I have some of my slides have pictures of the area, and some of them have maps, just to kind of mix it up, make it maybe a little less boring looking at all the maps. This is what will be area one, and it starts over in that corner. It's the first question I have. This is a, the Meyer Ranch property that is just east of Eagle Cliff Road. They have been doing the music at Myers Ranch Music Festivals and they've been doing some other events on the property. We heard a lot from the visioning sessions that people really like having a community gathering place where they can go and do some of these more community oriented events. They also, the, at, during the visioning, we also heard a lot of people say they would like places to go where they could hold events, like weddings or family reunions. I've been talking to Norm Meyer Jr. and some other people he's working with. They've been doing some special events. They're allowed to do, anybody is allowed to do 30 special events on your property a year. So they've been doing, that's how they've been doing the music concerts, and they've been doing some weddings there. They are considering perhaps making that a full-time operation. And because of all the input that I've heard about that at the community level from the community plan, we wanted to ask everyone if that made sense to include it into the activity center as like a community use, community gathering area. And this is just pictures of a concert I went to. Oh, another thing as far as outreach, I also went to Music at Myers Ranch and attended two of the, had a booth at two of the concerts, and also went down to the Rhubarb Festival in Pine Grove in order to try and reach some people that may not necessarily be plugged into our typical state of channels of communication. Okay. Mm -hmm. You're talking about Mayor Pine So part of it is already conserved in Jefferson County open space. We're mainly talking about the property that is just north of the church. And I also included the um, Our Lady of the Pines Catholic Church because it would be surrounded on three sides by the activity center. But mainly we're talking about the area that is, it runs right from Eagle Cliff Road, kind of southeast. So it includes, I don't remember. It actually does not include the very front portion. The next property I, want, property I wanted to talk about is this property here that is several properties actually. This. Just to let you know, I'm not really going geographically. I wanted the maps to be spread out so you could kind of tell where I wanted the questions to be. So they're just kind of random. This is Highway 73, and this is Highway 285. This right here is the Safeway Center, and this is Conifer High School. This is kind of a classic example of how community input throughout the planning process can change the plan recommendations. This, when I initially went to the village center meetings, we were looking at perhaps including all of this property into the village center, there are at what we're calling now activity center, because we were trying to have all properties have one designation or another, and hopefully not have a property that's partially in an activity center and partially out. And that's what was happening with this property in the current plan. We received some comments that there are some pretty big wildlife issues along Conifer Creek and concerns about the, um, the wildlife habitat that was in this area, and very sensitive wildlife habitat. So we took it out in the land use draft. Then we received comments from the property owner that they would like to be in the activity center for retail, for perhaps some retail, 
office, maybe some multifamily. I have not heard from all of the property owners in the area. And so I wanted to bring this up at a meeting and to bring it up as a question that people can comment on outside of this meeting as well. Could you show where the greenhouse is? The greenhouse? The, the geranium greenhouse, I don't know the name of it. The the I'm sorry, I'm not exactly sure on this map. It would be almost a little bit. Where's the underpass of the light up by the gas station? Gas station is here. So there's like where you go on. Here's the light in the underpass. The underpass of Pleasant Park Road? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that's right here. The zone is across the left of that. So is this yeah. the road off to the lower right of that park? Where you can that is this? No, no higher. The this? one that goes to the right. Uh, this is Highway 73? No. The one okay. that goes this way. Horizontal, sorry. Oh, this? No. At the lower right <laughs> this? there goes to the right. That's a private. So you're on the right. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that long one. What is that road? So since we kind of have no real, I guess we've gone back and forth, kind of what we're recommending now is that we basically keep it similar to what the plan recommends currently, which is residential. You could possibly do some higher density residential. And then in the area that was not in the activity center previously, having that be lower density residential to try to address the wildlife concerns around Conifer Creek. Next, we have the area that is basically the commercial area in Aspen Park. This is a picture, this, this picture really shows all of the area. This is the King Supers, and here's the, it's a bank and some other retail and the Conifer Stage Door Theater, and you can see it all, go all the way down to 85 to the Wolf, Pass, Wolf Road overpass. In this area, we received a lot of comments that this might be an area that you could do some residential. It's currently recommended only for retail and office. And we received a lot of comments at the visioning sessions that maybe there's a need for senior housing, maybe some entry level housing, maybe some townhomes, and then maybe if we mixed it in with the commercial uses, that might be a good place to do it. I've also received comments on the other end. So that's why I wanted to bring that and have people comment on whether there should be residential. If there should be, is it, would be, do people think single family or some sort of multifamily like apartments or townhomes might be appropriate? Or mixed use where you have residential above or maybe behind a commercial property. So the, the question was about whether there has been an extensive water and sanitation study throughout this area to, to address whether multifamily could potentially even be accommodated by the water and sanitation. And no, we have not done an extensive water study. We were looking at, <clears throat> I talked to our geologists about maybe doing a water availability analysis for this area. He had a concern that there are so many changes that could potentially occur with the recommendations that we may not get an accurate idea of what the water capacity was. Whenever somebody comes in to rezone though for a specific proposal, 
they would need to demonstrate that they had adequate water and sanitation. And that is a huge issue up in the mountains. And that could be a very limiting factor in a lot of this development. And that could be a reason why people say, you know what, that sounds like a nice idea, but maybe we need to leave that on the table for a while until there is additional maybe water and sanitation providers. King Supers currently provides water and sanitation, and their, their, their district is supposed to encompass more area, but it's not a huge extensive area at this point in time. But whatever, if anybody did decide to come in and rezone, they would have to prove to the, to the county that there was adequate water and sanitation provision. Yeah. There is some residential mixed in with the, uh, of, by the school there. There's, there's homes right along there. No. Is that already, uh, what I say, already okay? So the question was, there are all, there's already some residential that's near the school and in the Aspen Park area, and would that be okay? That's one of the things with the recommendation, if somebody wanted to rezone, and, and again, any residential use that's already there, this doesn't affect the zoning. But if they do want to rezone, the current recommendation would not recommend residential. And there are still some properties in the pink area. It's the pink area on these maps that's up here. This area. And there are still some homes in that area and residentially zoned properties. So in those cases, somebody wanted to rezone for additional residential, the plan would not recommend that with the current recommendation. The zoning of them would not be affected. If they wanted to rezone, then that's when, if they are in the pink area, that's when the county would recommend retailer office, going to retailer office. There are a lot of homes, so a big portion of the Avenue Park area is north and west of where this is, which is being recommended for residential uses. And Bennett, did I see another yeah. question? What is the definition of neighborhood commercial and then limited commercial? There are, we, one of the things we added to this round of the land use recommendations in the centers were more specific definitions of the land uses. Before it just said retail or it might just say commercial. We have definitions in the conference master plan that specifically talk about what neighborhood commercial is and what limited commercial is. And those are new, new terms I've never heard before. Yeah. And so I can read them for you if you'd like. Or I can, you can come just look at them. Can, just in, in a few words as possible, what, what's the basic difference? Limited commercial is smaller in size. We talk about in the limited commercial areas, limiting the size of the structures to 5,000 square feet. Grocery stores might be able to go up to 10,000. It would not, limited commercial doesn't allow for some things that neighborhood commercial would allow for, such as gas stations, auto repair, fast food service with drive through are discouraged in those areas. In neighborhood commercial, it's a larger, <coughs> larger type commercial designation. And it, uh, from looking at all the square footages, it looks like everything that's already there would be accommodated under this. It talks about having offices, retail, restaurants, grocery stores, that could go up to 75,000 square feet. Uh, commercial buildings could go up to 20,000 or 7,500? 75,000. So the King Supers is about 69,000 square feet. And the Safeway is about, oh, maybe the King Supers is slightly, it might be 64. And then maybe this new Safeway is 69. So they are very close to that 75,000 square feet. We 
were trying to make it clearer what type of re uh, retail or commercial uses that we were looking at. We had these definitions in the comprehensive master plan from other plan updates that we have done. So we wanted to, if we could, use existing recommend existing definitions. And so we're trying to clarify what the types of uses are that will be allowed. I understand. To go out of this, I'm asking for the next step. Conceptually, what are you trying to achieve? Are you saying getting farther away from the main road must be smaller? Getting closer to residential must be smaller? What are you trying to achieve with this? Yeah. So the question was, what are we trying to achieve by having the different designations? And basically, we're trying to achieve compatibility with the surrounding areas and also accommodating existing businesses that are, that are there. So where like the King Supers and the Safeway are, those are recommended for neighborhood commercial because they already have some larger businesses. There's an area right at the corner of Barclay and 73 where the Yellow Barn is. That area we are recommending for limited commercial because it is smaller, it's adjacent to residential, it's kind of on the edge of the activity center. So it is trying to address compatibility and some of the existing businesses that are already there. Okay, I see your hand and then your hand and then your hand. When, when they are looking at changing some of the densities, um, whether for more commercial or for uh, higher density, residential, multifamily, nursing homes, <laughs> I know there's the geologists looking at the water, and that's probably water and sewers most. But does your plan take in any input from uh, the other services like fire department, uh, schools? Can they support uh, sheriffs? Because I mean, all, it seems all that would be totally impacted. So do you get input from from them? Mm -hmm. We have been notified fire districts, the sheriff's office, as we go through this. I did just recently receive some comments from somebody associated with one of the fire districts that I need to look into more because they sounded like there may be some concerns. I just received those very recently, so I'm not able to comment on those in detail. But also, with the rezoning, we would again refer any proposal to a, the fire district and the sheriff's office, any other emergency providers that are in the area, public service, um, Excel or IRA and make sure that they have the appropriate services to be able to handle this or if there are things that need to be done with the development to make it so that it's better served. I know that sometimes fire districts will require cisterns on properties and maybe increased road widths or grading roads so they look, they're look less steep, things like that. So there are, can be requirements with a rezoning. Okay, let's see. Yep. The property that's being developed uh, over there by the Safeway right now, uh, approximately how many square feet is that? And is there a height limitation uh, that comes into effect in a building like that? And what is it? What is being built there? It is a natural grocer's. A grocer's? I... Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Natural grocer's? A natural grocer's is what's being built there. I am trying to remember, I want to say, I'm not remembering the exact square footage, I want to say it's somewhere between 25 and 30,000 square feet, and I don't know the height. I did bring a lot of the zoning, that is a planned development zone district, so they have their own standards, they can create their own standards as far as height, and I don't know what that one is right offhand, but if you wanted to come find me when we get into the discussion, we can look that up. And sir, with the beard. Yes, uh, my name is Jill LaBarge. I'm on the corner of uh, Scott Road and Barclay. And uh, my big, one of my big concerns is, is if you put apartment buildings over here, and so now you're gonna have more traffic. Mm -hmm. I would beg any of your people to come to my house like 6.30 in the morning, get in my wife's car, and she's on her way to work and try to get out on Barclay. I mean, at, in the morning, <clears throat> or when the RTD bus comes in, and they open the floodgates, you might as well just stay somewhere else because you can't get across. And 
Right, and also, I have another pet peeve, like when you're coming south on 285 and you go past uh, Ace Hardware, and there's a exhilaration lane coming out off of Barkley there, okay? Well, on Holocaust, mm -hmm. you take your life in your own hands <laughs> if you want to get off there. I'm serious. Yeah, true. yeah because, true. because the exhilaration lane comes on, people are coming, you know, on the 285 raceway, mm -hmm. and they are going 80, so they're going to go to Safeway now. So now they get in that lane when you're trying to make get off on Hobbitop. Okay. You know, in 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 the traffic on Scott Road now is, you know, the people come off of 285 and go down our road as fast as they do on 285. So I think that is definitely a comment that you should make under other, I have, a, I have an area over here for other comments. One of the things with new development, they are required to submit information about traffic and any sort of traffic that would be generated from that development. It may be a traffic analysis or it may be a traffic study depending on the intensity. And then those studies make recommendations for road improvements that might be needed to accommodate the additional traffic. That could be acceleration, deceleration lanes, which sounds like maybe in the case of have, have, I, I always say that wrong. I've been saying it wrong. Have a cost road might not work so well. And I know in others, I've driven in other areas where it, it does create an interesting conflict. But there are improvements that are required to be done by developers when they put in new development that is more intense and will cause additional traffic impacts than are on the property. Yes, ma'am, and I understand that. But we, since I've lived here, they put King Super, Safeway, overpasses. I think all of us here moved here so we could get away from the hassle of the city. But now the city has come to us, and we still have these little teeny roads. You know, so what you're saying is that somebody was supposed to look at this and make the roads bigger, better, easier, but it hasn't happened. Yeah. All they do is just keep adding buildings on land, and then somebody, there's, there, look at how many buildings are empty around here. You know, there's, there's all these buildings that they just keep devouring our land to put up a structure and nothing goes in there. And, all, and we come to these meetings, and I'm not saying you individually, but we get all these promises. Oh, yeah, we're going to do this and we're going to do that. Well, nobody does anything because they don't, I don't think they care about the people that live in the area. They just, they're in for the money, the building, let's get it done, and raise our taxes, and, and tap into our water supply, you know? So, I, I'm just, I'm just fed up with it, you know? I mean, I moved here for a purpose, and I understand that there's change. But if you want to live in an apartment, live in Denver. You know, why do you want to live in an apartment in the mountains? We've heard, well, just like you know, we've heard from some people that uh, are wanting, they live up in the Conifer area, and they want to stay up in the Conifer area, but they're getting older, and they might not want to take care of 5, 10, 35 acres anymore. And so that's kind of one of the options, and that's one of the reasons why we are looking at perhaps an apartment or a townhome or something. So just to let you know, that's that is some people... That is what we've heard from some people. And it sounds like you have a differing opinion. So sure do. Yeah. <laughs> it's a good thing you're here tonight. Yes. Uh, just think about I understand you want a larger tax base. Oh, okay, that's fine. But a cart before the horse. Water supply is essential for everything. Has an idea of a reservoir, maybe not close to 285, somewhere around the area for wildlife or whatever. I don't want animals crossing to a drive in more than one house, but we need a water supply, a reservoir, 
water treatment. I would think that that would be bigger essential than more people right now. Yeah. So the question, I'm not sure if everybody in the back could hear, was about whether there have been considerations for a reservoir or some sort of water supply for the Aspen Park, specifically the Aspen Park area. And I have not heard of any consideration for that. The county does not provide any water and sanitation services. We, in all parts of unincorporated Jefferson County, water and sanitation is provided by special districts, which are another governmental entity that provides the water and sanitation. And so I don't foresee the county getting into providing water and sanitation and building a reservoir. I don't know if there is anybody in the community that is interested in getting a special district together that might do that. I, I have not heard. Uh, several years ago, I went to town meetings at the school, and we took that up on stage and announced that they were planning to pull water out of you know, my baby out of the river, pump it up here, run it back down the baby after it's used, and then the recession came. Have you ever heard what happened to that day? Because he had the right of for the water, he was all ready to go, and that would have solved all the water problems. And that went dead. And this reservoir thing is great. I mean, we don't have enough water under the filler reservoir unless it comes off a stream like that. So I'm sure that's in the county records, it's on film, because they film all those, those meetings. All the little things. That's been about three, four years? Four years. So they can look it up, find out who that was, and find out what was involved, because that did a lot of homework before they got on the stage here in front of our community. And then it's just going to die because the economy is poor. So I think maybe that might be an option for what you fix. Well, it's not the real problem, but your water problem. And I keep saying the same thing because they rezone the end of Pleasant Park Road here where it meets 285 for high density condominiums. The guy's drilling drill bells, he can't get a successful well anywhere. But again, that guy was also planning something like that water source to be there. So I think.
going back to reservoirs, the Twin Forks Reservoir was proposed back in the 80s. And I talked to Denver Water recently. They said that it was tabled for 25 years and it is about to come up again. They don't, so I left, just to FYI, I left the reservoir section in the plan just because I was not sure what would happen. It doesn't sound like they're interested, but who knows what will happen in another five years when that agreement comes up. Heather, the businesses and the homes along there that we're talking about, they all have their own individual well. For the most part, the individual well and so yeah, except for like the King Supers, well they have a well, right. but they serve multiple. I'm uh, talking the smaller mm -hmm. businesses that are clustered yeah. along there, and their own individual wells and um, on-site sanitation systems. That draw has to be pretty significant for the whole area. <clears throat> and that's something that has been looked at in many a rezoning case as far as the uses and whether they're appropriate because is there enough water in the basin to support that and is there even just enough um, legal water as well yes just one comment as you come down the side of the hill there um, there's Aspen Park Tire and Auto and they're going in and uh, graded out and enlarged the parking lot without any landscaping uh, have a lift they work on cars on the outside of the building have an area next to Bron chiropractor where they uh, uh, store old used tires, and I'm just going to see if you're talking about residential. I think a trailer park would blend in there real well. <laughs> <laughs> With that comment, we'll move on to the next <laughs> This is question number four, and so then I'll be over, uh, over in this area. This is a property that is in between. Here's 285, here's Highway 73. Yeah, from this view, the intersection where Pleasant Park Road is, is off the screen. This is the Safeway, and so this is the property or properties just south of the Safeway Center. In the existing plan, it was actually split between a couple of different uses. It was split between, let me see if I can remember, Mountain Light Industrial and Office, and I believe it was Residential Mountain Light Industrial and Office. We wanted to make it consistent and have one recommendation for the whole thing, so we chose the most inclusive recommendation. We did recently hear from the property owner that they would like to have consideration for maybe some commercial retail type of uses there. One of the reasons for that would be that in 2003, Three, the county did a Main Street feas extension feasibility study. You can see that's why this road, this is Main Street. This was constructed because of that plan. The county near Pleasant Park Road has also been requiring the developers dedicate right of way for Main Street. And the idea is that that would connect Pleasant Park Road up to Main Street and Aspen Park to provide residents with a way of getting around the Aspen Park area without having to get on 285. This property is actually on both sides. There are recommendations for, this one is neighborhood commercial, which does include retail, service establishments, restaurants, and this area just to the south also includes neighborhood commercial. So the question I have is whether some sort of neighborhood commercial may also be appropriate on this site, given the extension of Main Street going through. Water. <laughs> I, 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 yeah. My name's Charlie Whip, and I just, uh, again, I'm not going to draw this out with the water thing or whatever, but it, it, I would just like to support what everyone else is saying, that it really does make sense. This is really the the cart before the horse here type of thing because with that section that we're looking at there, this gentleman up here was talking about that he lived here for 75 years and the, the latest, one of the latest uh, rezoning proposals was very, very close to that around that corner on Pleasant Park there um, and several drills, wells were drilled 
on that property, and that property was uh, was was not rezoned because of the water issues. And a, a very large attempt was made to get the water problems uh, taken care of in that proposal, and they were not able to do that. And I like the idea of of the conifer planning and such. However, it's 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 again it's jumping ahead of of what really needs to happen up there because even if this gets within the proposal and a developer or whoever comes for the greater good of the community and I'm not opposed for development, however, that developer is going to have to jump through those same hoops and it's really kind of a dead end, even if you have a lot of money which speaks and gets things done up here, it's still, even if you're piggybacking off of the Safeway area and the water and sewer there, it's going to be a really tough battle and I don't see Jefferson County being very supportive in taking on that battle. And again, I, I'm not going to draw this out, but it, 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 it really would be nice to see something going forward in that as opposed to the kind of plan. I know this has to happen too, but I just want to support the, the idea behind that too. So it, just to kind of summarize, it sounds like maybe a concern here is kind of like expectation management. If there is not water, are we leading somebody to expect to be able to do something more intense with their property than they might not be able to do once they get to proving water? But isn't that the homeowner or the property owner's problem, not the county's problem? It, well, it is up to the owner in order to demonstrate that to the county. Right. Yeah. So it, it's, it's a, uh, a throw of the dice. Yeah, it, it is a throw of the dice, and there are different expectations. We are looking big picture, 10, 15 <laughs> years into the future. Okay, so, I have to make a comment. Yeah. You brought up the feasibility study in 2003. Yeah. And I just need for, to remind yourself of Jefferson County that in 2004, Board of County Commissioners unanimously decided not to extend Main Street south of the Conifer Town Center. So we need to look up that resolution. Furthermore, highways and transportation ignored that Board of County Commission resolution, and they dotted line within, which was against the county's recommendation. So that dotted line for the extension is technically inappropriate as far as a loop, because the loop doesn't exist, and frankly, it's never going to exist. And if you're going to talk about this in this transportation, I really think it's appropriate that you talk to the landowners that are impacted before you put in all these requirements. So, in regard to the 2004 resolution, I have not looked at that, but I, I have to say I am wondering if the Board of County Commissioners, and I don't know, I'm speculating, could be that they said the county is not going to put it in. That doesn't mean we might not require somebody developing their property to put it in. So I know that, I, and I'll have to look at it, I'll have to look at it, that, it's, that could be speculation. Because I know that right now it is on our major thoroughfare plan, which means that when people come in to develop their property along that area, we would require that they design and either construct or give us money to construct that project. That, that's saying that's going against the county resolution, and furthermore, planning and zoning told two homeowners south of that property that Main Street was not going in and that they could go and purchase their property. So I'm seeing two sides of the issue out that doesn't make sense to me, where the county is encouraging land future people to go buy property that Main Street is supposed to go through and telling them, don't worry, Main Street is not going through. So yeah, there's, there's, uh -huh. there's, a, there's a definite inconsistency here yeah. that, that is inappropriate. And I'll definitely have to look that up. And I see Russ making notes in the back so that I can look that up when I get back to the and, office. And again, I'm encouraging you to talk to the landowners as well. 
But to your knowledge, that is still a proposal that Jefferson County is looking at as that main street. Since it's here and we're talking about it tonight, you'll look at that. But that, yes. to your knowledge as of right now, it's it's still a possibility yeah. as far as what they're looking at. Yeah, right now it is in our transportation plans. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. Okay. The plan so is only advisory. They are only advisory. Yes. <coughs> this. Number five, and I had to kind of skip, I lost wall space, so I skipped up here for questions five and six. This is just north of the property that we were just talking about, was right here, and just north of the Safeway Center, north of Light Lane, there's another property that is proposed to potentially be bisected by Main Street. The current plan was recommending residential in the area, and we did receive a request from the property owner that maybe some additional retail or office be included in there because of the road. And that did seem appropriate, and so staff is recommending that, but we did want to get feedback from the citizens in the area. So that's question five over here. And there's a few different options that we have for that question. Some of the questions, you can choose more than one option. Yes? Uh, I, live, I live down by the, down by the King Super Zoom. Now, I'm looking at these maps and your proposed changes to your activity center and ranges, and it looks to me like, why don't you just go all along the highway to every main road and just make it commercial. We'll just turn it into a strip mall. Mm -hmm. All the way down 285, we can go all the way to Crow Hill. Because that's what it looks like. It looks like Commercial, 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 piece 10. And there's so many empty buildings. It's just what it looks like. I mean, there's just, there's just no break. Mm -hmm. So the comment is that it looks like maybe the county is proposing having a commercial all along 285 from Aspen Park area oh, down like to Crow Hill. I mean, you know, there's no break it, in there except for Meyer Ranch, is there? There I mean, is. So there are activity centers. And those activity centers, the idea is that in those areas, that's where, if there's new commercial, that's where they should go. And that is the Aspen Park. Now, it's a very large, this is a large activity center. It extends from the King Supers down to Pleasant Park Road. But beyond that, there is not another center where there's proposal for more commercial until Pine Junction. There are pink areas on the map which designate existing Re, um, existing non-residential areas. The current plan didn't acknowledge a lot of the commercial that was already existing from along 285, from the Pleasant Park area, actually all the way from the northern boundary of Turkey Creek, to North Turkey Creek, all the way down to Pine Junction. What we wanted to do with this plan is acknowledge that these there are commercial areas along 285. They exist, they're either zoned or already built for commercial, and there may be some very limited opportunity for change of use, like if somebody, we had a proposal in the Green Valley Ranch area recently where somebody wanted to change a restaurant into a microbrew group. Something like that, we'd have to look at what the impacts are, if they're comparable to a restaurant, maybe something like that, you could do commercial. But we're not looking at expanding those areas beyond where they're already at. So there isn't new properties along 285 from Pleasant Park Road to Pine Junction that are recommended for commercial. And the last one in Aspen Park has been talked about before, and I feel like we've talked about it at other meetings before, but I want to keep I wanted to bring it up because it seems like it comes up at a lot of the meetings. So this is Pleasant Park Road, and then it turns and goes back up the hill, and then there's the other switchback. This property is currently in the plan, the or in the activity center, sorry. It's, yeah, obviously in the plan. It's in the activity center. It was recommended for residential. It was rezoned to allow for residential, multifamily, I believe it was up to either 65 or 75 units, depending on 
whether they could get a connection through to the proposed Main Street. When I drove up there on Pleasant Park Road, it seems like it's quite a different character once you get kind of past the switchback. So looking at this and be based on feedback, even though it's already zoned multifamily, staff is looking at putting in kind of a if-then clause. If this should continue forward, if they, and this doesn't change zoning, like I said, if they for some reason want to rezone, maybe high inten higher intensity residential would be appropriate if there was a connection through to Main Street to alleviate traffic on Pleasant Park Road. However, if that connection cannot be made or, around, or maybe until that connection is made, then that should be lower density residential, maybe one to five, one to 10 dwelling units per acre. I can't remember offhand what I put in there. So that is one thing that I wanted to note and ask people to comment on. Yes. That last section six that you're talking about, that is the, the property that I was talking about earlier that we were talking that was close that was turned down. It was approved. So it was they can't they they're having problems with water. Yeah. It's, so it's it was so the zoning was approved yeah. for the residential of sixty five units. It's either 65 or 75. I can't remember. 65. So I want to say it's 65 if they had the connection through to Main Street, and 45 if they did not. And contingent on water or not even or no? Um, they they gave us some in, a lot of information about water at the time of rezoning. They have to give us more information if they wanted to actually put in the proposal, and that's either through a plat process or our site development plan, they have to prove even more intense water um, that they have it. They actually have to like, so with the rezoning they have to show they have legal water and we do a water analysis for the basin, which I don't know if it, that was in place when that went through. But then for a subdivision plot, they actually have to drill the wells and prove to us that they have physical water as well. They throw wells. So it was approved, however, they didn't quite have the water at this particular time. It sounds like they might have the legal water, but maybe not the physical water. So what's the difference in legal and physical? <laughs> so legal water is like paper water. It's, it's <laughs> division of water resources kind of determines that there's a certain amount of water in this. And you can apply to the division of water resources to try to access that water. And then you actually drill the well, and if water comes out of your well, that's your physical water. So in, in, in Colorado, water law mainly deals with the legal proof of water. That's also what Jefferson County dealt with for a long time. Recently, we adopted the Mountain Groundwater Overlay District, where we look more intensely at water through the rezoning process, our subdivision planning process, our site development process, even with building permits, somebody may have to do a cistern to ensure that they have enough water at all times. So I forget where I'm going with that. <laughs> Russ. Uh, if I recall correctly, that property that got highlighted for number six recently came back into the county to look at building out their um, entitlements. I believe what they discovered was that their, their legal water, their paper water, had expired. I thought that was... I thought this, that was this property. Yeah, I'm not sure. They, I, I have been updated on my information. They have reapplied back to the additional water resources or water port, and they're going back to the process. Sorry. Yeah. Can you just briefly resummarize what questions he poses this Did you make it its own center? Did not have it be a center? For that for this specific property? Right. So this is should it be in the center as it is now with higher density residential? Or should we have this kind of if-then clause that we wrote in there where if they can connect through to Main Street, then it can be higher intensity, otherwise it should be lower intensity. 
And also, the questions are all written up around the room. But if there are questions, maybe if I didn't explain them clearly enough, let me know. Then, briefly, the Pine Junction Village Center. That is an area where we really didn't get a lot of comments since the land use meeting. So this has not changed. But since we had so many comments on Aspen Park, I wanted to just make sure that everyone was OK with the proposed uses and boundaries. The boundaries of that did change quite a bit because there was a residential area that we removed from there based on comments from the residents in the area. Can you say what the proposal is? So there was this residential area that we removed. We also expanded this area. It's the mine area. There was a weird line that kind of cut across a whole bunch of properties. It kind of went down like this. So we included all of the properties in that center. And basically, we're saying that that's current, a current mining operation. But if it is in the future, once that operation is done, it could be considered for mountain light industrial and office uses. And then also, we were looking at designating this. Um, right now, it said non, uh, retail office. Retail office residential. Yeah, and so what we're looking at is mountain scale commercial, which is a more specific definition, and adding residential because there are some residences on the northern end of the property. The small yellow uh, oh. residential area, yeah. right where the county line is, mm -hmm. you kind of bisects a building that is not for residents, mm -hmm. but yet your little triangle is showing that it's residents. Okay, that's good to so know. Let you know. Yeah, um, and I would encourage you to note that on our high junction is over there. I encourage you to note that on there because I also included this residential area basically just because it was surrounded by that and the park county line. So if that needs to be changed. <laughs> No, I'll look that up. I, I'm wondering, properties along the line are odd. They're assessed. Sometimes they're showing up as zoned in Jefferson County, but assessed in Park County. So it's kind of weird. And we have a policy about, a special policy for coordination on those types of properties. Yes? So the lower two properties in that uh, purple mountain light industrial that you've added to it from the previous plan, those are both just residential 10-acre lots. Is there any reason why those would have been added to a Light industrial office plan there? This is property owned by IREA, and then this is a property that actually has an auto body shop on it. Um, okay, maybe that's for the north than I thought it was. I don't think so, though. The lower one is my neighbor, and that, that's a house. There's none developed options in that area. Is it? Yes. Yeah, and I know that, yeah. I mean, we can double check on it. Okay, maybe that's for the north than I would have thought it was. Okay. Russ, did you have a comment? I believe there's some existing industrial zoning in that area as well. Yes, that was for the auto body shop. Yes, thank you. Yes? So the comment was that this quarry is leased by Jefferson County Road and Bridge, and they use this quarry for not just local roads, but for roads all over Jefferson County. Thank you. Do you know the lifespan of that quarry when they, when they plan on being done with that? I want to say that when I talked to Road and Bridge, they thought it was at least 30 years. An additional 30 years? But it wouldn't be owned by Jefferson County. It's not, it's just leased by Jefferson County. <laughs> Another thing I just wanted to bring up is that we do have the specific land use maps for those areas outside of activity centers. Those are all of these maps over here. So check them out. If you have any comments that I didn't get from before, I didn't really have a whole lot of changes in this area. There were some comments and, and some changes. I actually reduced some of these yellow areas. 
The yellow areas are probably the areas that you want to concentrate on most. Those are areas where there could potentially be an increased density from one house per 10 acres to one house per five acres. And there are also some special conditions on some of those with the crosshatch and the lines. Those are, there could be special meadow policies or special wildfire policies that would apply to those areas. But we did actually decrease some of those areas based on some comments and feedback that we got about um, the wildfire hazards and cul-de-sacs um, and some issues with previous, some other items that people knew about. There was also, just recently, I wanted to bring this to everyone's attention, and I don't have it as a specific question, but I, I kind of mentioned before that here's 285, here's Kings Valley. This is the, the come and go, and then that office building that was built that I think is still vacant. There was a proposal to make Kings Valley into an activity center, and include properties along the south side of 285 because of the interchange that could go in in the Kings Valley area. Just to let you know, staff did not update this. We, from comments received from the Conifer Area Council survey, from about expansion of the number of activity centers, from comments that we got from our visioning session, it didn't seem like that was, it seemed like that was probably premature. The, talking to CDOT, they are not really sure when those improvements will be done. It could be after our next plan update, we typically update plans 10 to 15 years. It seemed like there wasn't a ton of community support and it seemed like it might have been premature. So we did not add that in, but I did want to bring that to everybody's attention. Yes. Okay, my piece of property is the one that's in the gray area there with the little driveway that goes up right there, okay? And so that's where the bridge is going to go if they put it in. And it makes sense to me that if they're going to impact me that much, that I ought to be able to take that little pink line straight across there, right across there, and include it in that activity center. Because the lights from the bridge are going to just shine right straight into my property. And I think that one of our concerns was that it seems like it's a long ways out when that would actually be constructed. So it seemed like in this plan's lifetime, it may not be it may not be constructed, and therefore the impacts might not be there. Well, if you if you try and get just like this gentleman over here, you can't get out. You got to try getting out Kings Valley on 285 <laughs> right now, anytime on a Friday night or. Any weekend or anything like that, and even even any time in the evening, and you sit there and you sit there and you sit there. So I think that that as they widen 285, that's going to be one of the next priorities right there. It's going to be before 15 years from now if they come up with the funding. So I think it, it needs to be included. Well, I would encourage you to make that comment on that sheet over there. That and I'll tell you about how to make comments and everything. Um, I also, I'm just going to briefly go through it because I, I think we might be running out of, we only have about half an hour left in the meeting. Meadows have been a big issue in the Conifer area. And there have been a lot of comments how we need to make sure we preserve meadows in the future for Conifer. We have developed a definition now for meadows and it is in the, it is, actually I'm not sure if it's in the plan. It is hanging up over there. And we used comments that we received from the community. <laughs> Thank you, Dana. <laughs> we, we used comments from the community. We looked at the American Planning Association Dictionary. We looked at the um, EPA's website. We looked at the Ecologic Dictionary, Wikipedia. And we came up with this definition as a compilation of all. Please look at it, see if it makes sense. We also have special meadow policies. They are different inside activity centers and outside activity centers. So please look at those policies, those are also in the plan, and let me know whether you agree with those or whether they need some revisions.
Before we get to walking around the room and doing the mapping exercise, I want to talk about the dwelling, five units, five <laughs> acres. That looks like it might, or is that, was that last one there? Did you talk about that? Yep, that, oh, so that is outside of activity centers, and that could, those are areas, there weren't a lot of constraints as far as when we were developing the recommendations, we looked at slope, wildfire hazard, wildlife quality, we looked at character compatibility with the rest of the lots in the area, what are the other surrounding lot sizes, we looked at cul-de-sacs and whether there was an overly long cul-de-sac, and in those, there are some areas that are the cross-hatched, the double cross-hatched, and those are areas where there were no very few constraints, but there was a meadow. So those policies would apply in those areas. Yes? Is this proposed definition for a meadow um, the same in the flatlands as it is in the mountains? You know, that is one thing that we have been talking about in staff meeting. We still need to figure out whether this would be a, a, a definition that went everywhere because in the plains, uh, pretty much everything is a uh, meadow. <laughs> and so that's called developable land. And in the mountains, it's a little bit different. In the comprehensive master plan, it specifically says under visual resources that mountain meadows are visual resources. So we may end up either tweaking this to say mountain meadows, or we may have this definition just in our mountain plans. Great. I think a lot of folks in the mountains believe it's a, a really different animal here because it's, it's surrounded by natural forest. Not the case in the floodlands. Yeah. Next steps on this plan before I let you loose and then I'll leave before you hear about them. Comments on this draft plan. I would like them back by September 22nd. Then after that, I want to get another draft, a second draft out sometime early October so that there can be another review period of the second draft before I need a final draft to be done in November. There's been a planning commission hearing scheduled for December 2nd. And that is when the planning commission will act on this plan. The board of planning commissioners does not act on community plans or area plans or the comprehensive master plan. That is the duty of the planning commission. So we'll not go to the board of planning commissioners. The planning commission makes the final decision on these plans. I would prefer comments in writing. You can email me or I can give you my address if you want to write a letter. You can call me, ask questions. I would prefer just to have it in writing so that it is in your own words and so that I don't misinterpret what you're saying over the phone. Feel free to give me a call. I'll probably also make a phone list, but I just it makes me feel more comfortable that your words are in the staff packet for comments. Yes. And the comments are public? Are they made public for anybody in the county to see them? They are. Are the identification of the commenters attached to the comment? What? How much info, in other words? Yeah, so what I, any comments that I receive will be part of public records. So anything that you have, whatever you send me, that information will be included in the packet. Just to let you know what I do when I get to this stage of plans is I create something called a listening log that has the individual comment and then what staff what, what staff decided to do with that comment and why. It, it, so that we can track and say, yes, we did get your comment and this is how we address it. In that listening log, I typically just put initials of citizens instead of putting their full name just to provide a little bit of a little bit of anonymity and yet still letting people if that was their comment they know oh those are my initials that was my comment it's right been addressed okay thank you on to the mapping exercise and with this i'm going to need some of russ's help and you might need a little patience try something new because we wanted it to be a little more interactive and i heard that people tend to prefer shiny stickers <laughs> over regular stickers, <laughs> but I have both. What I have is the questions that I went through hanging up all around the room. If 
you agree with the question, and I hopefully we made it clear what you're agreeing to, put a star by what you agree with. Doesn't matter what color the star is, it doesn't matter if it's one of the shiny stars or the regular little circles, whatever you want, put a star by it. If you don't agree, on each table there is a pad of sticky notes. Please write why you do not agree with the recommendation or the policy and stick it in the big blank space below. I figure we probably need more space for sticky notes than for stars, so that's why those are bigger areas. There's also pens around. You may need to share the sticky notes. I probably don't, I know I don't have enough for everybody. So I will pass around stickers, and there are sticky notes on the tables. If you have questions as you go through the process, or if you have questions before we start this, let me know, and I'll be hanging out here. Yes? You say you have all these online, so we... Thank you. Not yet. So I also want to create an internet survey, and I have not done that yet, so that I can send it out to everyone. But I can definitely post these questions online, just in a Word document or a PDF, so that people can look at that until I get that survey up. Okay, so we could, if we want to, we can re reply to it online? Yes, yes. You can definitely look at those online and then reply to them. They probably won't be up uh, until like Thursday because there's a little bit of a lag time between when I get things to the web portal. Yes, Russ. Just a, sorry, just a quick comment. If you did not receive an email about this meeting directly from Heather and got ordered you from somewhere else and you'd like to be on her email list, make sure your email is on one of these sign-in forms as legibly as possible so that Heather can add you to that list. Thank you.